You know, I saw a clip from a television show one time. It's not a show I would recommend that people watch, but I did see a clip of it where, um, where a family was sitting down to eat a meal, and they asked their son if he would say the blessing for the meal. So they said, son, will you say the blessing? He said, okay. He bowed his head and he started to pray. He said, dear God, my dad provided the food for this meal. My mom worked hard to cook it. What did you do? Thanks for nothing. Now that's a shock that somebody would say something like that. It's very blatant and so it surprises us. But I really suspect that that attitude, whether it's that blatant or not, is actually not that uncommon. You see, when we fail to be thankful to God for what He's given us, when we fail to recognize the blessings that He's given us, when we fail to be content with what we have, essentially we are saying, I, I deserve what I have, maybe I deserve more. Thanks for nothing, God. That's a pretty common attitude, I think. So that raises a question. Why should I be thankful? Why should I be thankful? Why should I? Well, I think our text today gives us a couple of good reasons why we should be thankful. So in 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, I want to read the whole text at once and then we'll break it up. He says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Since it is Thanksgiving today, we will be talking about giving thanks. And the thing I think this passage is trying to get across is that everyone should live a life of thanksgiving and contentment. Absolutely everyone should live a life full of thanksgiving and contentment. Now this passage is speaking more specifically about contentment, but contentment and thanksgiving are very closely related. If you're thankful, you're probably going to be content. And you will probably never be content and happy in life unless you're thankful for what God has given you. So we'll be talking about that today. I want to look at two reasons why we should be thankful and content. Some people say, why should I be thankful? Well, here's two good reasons. So let's look back at verse 6 now. He says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. First reason that we should be thankful is because we are blessed immensely. I cannot overstate this fact. We are blessed abundantly, no matter how you look at it. Let's break this up little bit by little. He says, godliness with contentment is great gain. In other words, the greatest gain of all, the great thing that you need, you have it right there and it doesn't even cost you anything. It's an attitude and a lifestyle. Godliness with contentment. That's something to be thankful for. It's a great gain. It's great benefit to us. He says, we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. How many people here were born, at the moment you were born, you were born with something? All the money you own, you were born holding that money in your hand when you were born. Nobody was. How many of you own something now, anything at all, that you can say, this is mine? I own a few things. Yeah. That, in, in business terms, that's what you call a net profit. You're doing good. You've got more than what you started off with. Anything you've acquired that you didn't have before, that's called a blessing. And he says here, if we have food and clothing, we'll be content with that. In other words, if we have enough to live on, we do have enough. Anything beyond that isn't just blessing, it's excess blessing. It's beyond what we need. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. The fact is, we are blessed with a lot. I did some research this week. And I found out exactly how rich I am. If you lined up everyone in the world, from richest to poorest, put Bill Gates or one of the oil sheiks or one of those guys on the very number one spot and lined up everyone else behind them, I would be number 464,770,115. Now that doesn't seem like a lot until you consider there's 7 billion people in the world. I am richer than 92% of the world population. 
I'm richer than 92%. I'm in the top 7.74% of wealthiest people in the world. And when I first came here and me and Randy and Jay settled on a salary, they apologized for not paying me more. You guys made me rich. I am blessed immensely. I have a good job. I have a good church with good people. I have a great wife. I have a nice place to live. I have food in my cabinets. I have money to buy food at the store when I run out. I have a car so I can drive to the store. I have money so I can put gas in my car so I can drive to the store. I live in a country where the government is wealthy enough to build and pave and maintain roads and plow and salt them in winter so I can get to the store. If I get cold this afternoon, I can just walk over to my thermostat and push a button a couple times and it'll warm up my house. If I get thirsty, I'll walk over to my faucet and water will come out, clean water that I can drink. If I get bored, I can watch TV or play cards or read a book or do whatever I want. I am blessed immensely. And if you're not sick of hearing me list off all my blessings yet, I can keep going until you are sick. We are so incredibly blessed. Now someone may say, though, well, those aren't really blessings. Those are the things that I deserve. I deserve those things. I work hard for my money. I earn it. I pay my taxes. I deserve the roads that the government is going to pay for me. I, I work hard, and so I deserve the things that I buy and the necessities of life. Maybe I even deserve a little bit more. But if you really want to talk about what we deserve, if I can be really blunt here, what we really deserve is not very good at all. You see, we are all sinners. We have all failed God. Therefore, the only thing that I deserve is I deserve to die and spend eternity in hell separated from the God who loves me. That's what I deserve. Anything I get that's better than that is a blessing from God, and I'm surrounded by them. And all this, we've just been talking about material things. This is not to mention the greatest blessing of all. Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. God gave us a gift that surpasses all other blessings. God gave us his son, and through his son, he gave us the offer of eternal life. And eternal life means we don't get what we deserve. We get better than that. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. That promise of the kingdom of heaven, that is more to be thankful for than we have time to thank God for in our entire lives. If we are anything, anything at all, we should be thankful because we are blessed so much. Bree and I were watching a TV show the other day, and something happened on it, and I can really relate to it, and I'm willing to bet maybe some of you can too. Uh, there's this uh, older man, and he has this health care worker who lives with him, and she helps take care of him. And uh, one day he walked in and sat down in his chair and there was a nice sweater sitting there in his chair that she had knitted for him as a gift. And he said, what's this for? She said, it's just a gift I wanted to give you. He said, well, what's the occasion? She said, there's no occasion. I just wanted to give you a gift. He said, well, there has to be an occasion. You can't just give me something for no reason. She said, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's just a gift. I just want you to enjoy it. He said, well, at least let me pay you for the materials for it. I feel bad just receiving a gift like that. And then later on in the show, he ended up buying her this big uh, basket full of bath beads and soaps and perfumes and things like that. And they got into a big fight because he just couldn't accept the gift humbly. He felt bad for receiving that gift. Do you guys ever feel like that? When someone gives you something, you ever feel bad? I, I, feel, I feel bad a lot. That's actually been a big struggle with me. And I think, I suspect that at least part of the reason that sometimes people feel bad when they receive things is because deep down you know you don't deserve it. It's not something you deserve. It's just a gift. It's really a blessing. I'll share something with you guys that's been on my mind for the past, uh, past few weeks. And yesterday was my birthday, and it was a really good birthday. Um, a, few, uh, a couple weeks ago, my wife gave me my birthday present because it came in the mail early, and I saw it, so she, uh, she had to go ahead and give it to me. I got the gift that I wanted, and then my in-law sent me a nice, a nice gift card as a birthday gift. And then, now my, you have to understand, my mother-in-law is a really good gift giver. That is her, she is really good at that. And she sent me this gift, and it was a nice, very generous gift. But then, the other day, even after that, she sent me this. This is not pepper bacon. I was real excited when I saw the pepper bacon. But she sent me, uh, here's a pair of scissors so that Brie can cut my hair. Here is, she sent me gum with a note that says stress relief. She sent me a nice pen that says to write down all your God-inspired thoughts. She sent me some highlighters, 
with a note that says uh, to take note of the many highlights God sends your way. Just, just a package of little fun things that I don't need. They're just, they're nice things. And I feel bad. She already got me a gift that was more than what I deserved anyway. And then she sent me that. And then to top it all off, uh, earlier this week, we went out to eat with some friends. And we were out at a nice restaurant, and some friends just said, you know, since your birthday, we'll pick up the tab. And they just bought my meal for me. And that was nice, and I felt bad about that. And then some other friends gave us a ride home. I went out and got in their car, and there was a birthday present sitting there in the back seat of the car waiting for me. And I felt bad about that. I feel bad because <laughs> I feel bad because I know I don't deserve these things. Why am I getting these things? I don't deserve them. Now, the correct attitude is not to feel bad. The correct attitude is to be thankful. Because everything I get, every good thing that I receive, even if it's through another person, is really a blessing from God. But I know I don't deserve these things. But we are so blessed immensely, all of us. We are so blessed that if we are anything, we should be thankful. Thankfulness should be a part of our lives, not just something that we remember once a year. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. But how do we be thankful? How do we develop an attitude that is more thankful for the things that we have? Well, I'll give you a couple of suggestions I think will help. First off, we need to stop thinking I deserve, because that's a really dangerous thought, is to think that I deserve anything at all, because truth be told, there's not much that I do deserve. I guess it's an exercise in humility. What I'm saying is realize exactly how small we are and how little we really do deserve, and that will help put us in the right mindset. And another thing that may help us to be thankful, look in the details of life. Look in the details, because every single day, we are surrounded by blessings that most of the time we don't even notice. Ephesians 5 verse 19 gives us several commands. It says, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are surrounded by blessings. We should notice them. Try to notice them and give God thanks for those. Give Him thanks for everything, even the small blessings day to, in day-to-day -day life. You know, you might even want to write them down. I used to keep a notebook where every day when I would take some time to pray and read my Bible, I would just write down five or six little blessings I had seen that day or from the day before um, that God had given me. Just little things. And it's easy to tell what a blessing is. Let me give you two questions to identify a blessing. Is it good? And do I deserve it? Now, I'll cut that down um, to one question. Is it good? Because if it's good, you probably don't deserve it. But is it good? And if it is... It's a blessing from God. And everything, I would, I would write down stuff in my notebook. When I, when I got to spend time with some friends, that was a fun, good thing. I didn't deserve it. So that's a blessing from God. If it was a beautiful day with a nice sunshine outside, that's a good blessing from God. You write that down. Even the things that we may not like can be blessings. Let's say you do something wrong and you feel bad, you feel convicted about it, and you ask God to forgive you. Well, it's a blessing that God forgives you, but even beyond that, the conviction itself is a blessing because that just shows that God still loves you and he's still working on you and he's not given up on you yet. That's a blessing. Everything. We're surrounded by blessings all the time, so take note of the small blessings that we have in life. But overall, just be thankful because we are blessed abundantly. I cannot overstate that fact.